Hey everyone, it's your main man Omni here. We're going to continue our Omnification of Sekiro by laying the groundwork for my Apocalypse System. What is the Apocalypse System? Well, that is a topic that does deserve its very own video, and it will be getting its own video, and it will be posted to the General Purpose Let's Hack series. Um, but for today, we'll go over it briefly. Basically, it is a system I've designed that comes in the form of a number of game-neutral assembly functions that, when hooked into the game, effectively omnifies the way damage is handled for that game. Here are the basic mechanics of the Apocalypse system. When a player is hit by an attack, a 10-sided die is rolled. If that die lands on 1 to 4, the player will receive extra damage. Um, it's represented by the extra damage X uh, variable. Default is 2 times damage though. Kind of depends on the game. We'll tweak it a bit, whatever makes sense. If the die lands on 5 to 6, the player will receive the effect of Teleprotitis. Um, normal damage is applied, but then the player has all their axes shifted by plus or minus uh, 5 units. All that is randomly determined. So if uh, the player is going to get Teleprotitis, we'll generate a random number for the X, for the Y, for the Z, and we'll apply that randomly generated offset to all the axes. Um, there's a few more details with that one, but basically when you get hit, you get launched somewhere random. It can cause some pretty interesting things to happen if the game has fall damage, which Sekiro does, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, if the die lands on 7 to 9, a risk of murder roll occurs. We'll get back to that in a second. If the die lands on 10, the player experiences a sudden orgasm, and they are fully healed. Because that's what would happen if you orgasm during battle, right? Now, remember, if it lands on 7 to 9, a risk of murder roll is applied. Um, so what that one is, it's a separate five-sided die roll, and basically, when that's getting rolled, there's a risk you're going to get murdered. Uh, if it lands on one to three, normal damage is applied, but if it lands on four to five, the player receives 69 times damage. That's basically the apocalypse function. We'll be going uh, into it in greater detail uh, on a video that's dedicated to it. However, it is the uh, very first Omnified system I want to hook up into this game. It's typically how we do it. One cool thing about the Apocalypse system that I forgot to mention is that uh, when all that's hooked up, the die rolls are actually displayed on the stream. So you can see what's actually going on behind the scenes. It's pretty neat. Looking forward to showing you guys how I get it working. The point at which we want to hook into the Apocalypse system exists at the code responsible for calculating the damage that is about to be applied to a player's health. So, let's say I get hit by a bad guy, bad guy does 10 damage. There's somewhere in the code where it's taking that 10 damage and it's going to subtract it from a variable or holding my current health and then it's going to apply that new health to my health. I refer to that section of code as the damage maths with an F because why not? So the process of finding this uh, code is usually pretty interesting and it varies between each game. Hopefully I can teach you though how to do a more complicated uh, code dive um, with this little video yeah, today. So guys, if we want to find out where the calculation is being performed, we first need to start the place in code where it's updating that health of the player to a new value following a hit. So to do that, we need to reverse engineer health, which we've already did in a previous video. Here it is right here. So far, we've only been looking at uh, places, places in code that read from places in memory. Let's, for this one, let's uh, see what's writing to it, okay? So, you can see that this function appears to be writing to uh, our health consistently. Um, let's put that aside for a moment and hope that there's going to be an additional function that gets logged when I actually receive a hit. Hopefully, we're not dealing the game that actually has a general purpose consistently executing health function that uh, is going off constantly to update it to its correct value. Because those are a pain in the ass to deal with. Hey, look at this. We got hit about three times, and we have this function here being called three times. So this code is responsible for updating the player's health to a new health value. Um, as far as we know, when they get hit, could be for other things too. It might go off when the player gets healed. Who knows? Um, so let's take a look at it here. So here's the uh, code that goes off, uh, responsible for updating our health to its new value after receiving a hit. Just take a look at it really quick. Here is where our uh, 
health is stored, and the new value is stored in the EAX register. Where is that coming from? This is interesting. It appears to be coming from itself, <laughs> but some sort of address in memory it's looking at here to get the value. Okay. Well, what writes to this? Ah, right here. So it loads an address in memory um, from the stack, puts it in the REX register, and then looks at that address in memory, taking the value stored in that address in memory and putting it in the EAX register. So this is uh, stored in the stack itself. Stack with an offset of 38. Okay. Beginning of this function here, we see the value that's an EDX being written to the stack with an offset of 10. We then see 20 being subtracted from the stack. That means uh, this is now being stored at RSP plus 30. Also, we have a push here, which will add eight bytes to the stack. So this is actually RSP plus 38 right here. So it, we actually wanna see what is running to EDX before this function is called. So uh, what is actually calling this function here? Let's go up the stack here a bit. Interesting, here's our hook to get the player health. This is probably called in many places. So EDX. EDX is written to right here. This is calling the function that actually updates the health. This is very interesting. It's taking RDI in and an REX to it. Using that as an address in memory. But it's not actually looking at what's stored in that address in memory. It's loading that address as a value into the EDX register since it's using the load effective address instruction. It's a very strange way to do it, <laughs> but um, most of these decisions are probably being made by the compiler, not by the developer. But I've still, I've never really seen this before. Um, all right. Well, let's put a breakpoint here and see what RDI might be. Let's try to get our heads around this. There's another hit. All right. RDI, this is the current health of the player, 40 hex, which is 64 decimal. And now it's adding it to this, and that's giving us our actual new health. This is actually where the math is being calculated. Um, this looks like a big number here, but it's actually smaller than the current health. This FFFFFD0. This is actually probably a signed integer. We want to convert it to a, uh, a decimal. So to do that, we're going to take the two's complement of that number. Two's complement. We're going to subtract that number. Let's copy it from FFF, FFF, FFF. We'll subtract this number from that, and then we're actually going to add one to it 48. So this is actually uh, representing the number negative 48. So that's the damage, it's 48 very interesting way that they're doing this. So this is actually where the math's being done. So this is actually where, where we want to hook uh, into the Apocalypse system. We want to hook into it before here, and we should have all the parameters we need. The Apocalypse system will, will return the updated uh, damage value, and we're going to place that here. So just to prove the point that we found the correct place in code to influence the damage being done to the character, let's uh, um, change the R the value of RDI here, and let's have it set so that the player is going to die. Actually, right now it's going to be subtracting 48 from the player's health, so which will not kill the player. So the player has 64 health. Let's have it subtract 200 from the player's health. Let's see what happens. So let's just do what we did in reverse in order to figure out what value to input here. Uh, we want to do 200 damage, right? We're going to subtract one because we added one last time. It's going to give us C7 here. Okay. I'm going to subtract C7 from FFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
and that gives us negative 136. So our health, new health total should be, well, it's probably gonna be a capped at zero, negative 136. Let's see if this works or if the game crashes horribly. Again, before I made any change here, I would not have died. I would have just taken some hits and I would have been left with 20 health. Let's see what happens now. As we can see here, this is the, the code that is actually responsible for updating the player's health to the new value. And look at that, it's gonna update it to zero. We're dead. So we found the place where damage is being calculated. It's sort of a strange way that they're doing it, but um, we'll be able to use this and implement the player apocalypse. Next step is to find out where the damage being done to enemies is being calculated, which might be in the same place. We don't know. We'll find that out next time. Once we do that, we'll have everything we need in order to implement the uh, apocalypse system.